Alrighty, so um, right from the start, take your fingers, stretch them out. Lots of, we got lots of notes today. We need to crack them, crack them. Yeah, lots and lots and lots of notes. Okay, quickly. I'm gonna, you're going to be behind, but okay. Um, so everybody should have a calculator, okay, because we'll need them um, all day, every day, next couple of weeks, okay? Um, we're going to start throwing stuff today. Hopefully, we're not going to throw stuff at each other, okay? Um, and then just so that you are aware, I have posted a video on Canvas um, that shows you how to graph these functions if you're working on them at home and you don't have a graphing calculator at home, uh, how to do that on Desmos. So, but that we are not going to teach you how to do it on Desmos. That's uh, for you, for FYI. We're going to teach you how to do it on the calculator because that's how you're going to be able to, uh, or when you when you get to an assessment a week from today, that's what you're going to be able to use. Okay. All right. So on the front board, I have um, written down, or actually Mrs. Hill has written down um, three different parametric equations that we would like you just to. This is literally. I think they're they're the next couple of, of slides in your on your um, notes packet. If you flip over to page two, um, there's there's three of them, three of those on there. Uh, just play around with the calculator, graph them, and see what you come up with. Okay. Remember that when you are um, graphing. So first off, you should double tap the on and open up a brand new document for yourself. Um, and come on now, there you go. Okay, so new document, don't save whatever it is you have, and then you need to go into graphs, and then you've got to menu, graph entry, edit, to get it to parametric functions. Okay, so graphing those three, um, those three sets. At home viewers, I will be putting up graphs of what they are. And then um, you can do that on Desmos. So here's what you got, or what you should have gotten on your very first ones. Now, my question to you is this. How many people just got that? Yeah? Most of you should have. Why is mine different? Was it three cosine? Side note, it's a function of t, so instead of using theta, you had to use t. What's the difference? As far as I think Radians and degrees, right? Okay. Two pi. What's that? Is that radians or is that degrees? That's radians. So if you're graphing in radians, if you see a pi, that's radians. Your calculator needs to be in radians. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One, you can go down into menu and settings, and you can go with your graphing angle here, and you can make it be radians. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you can do what I was just doing. Come on. Is you can scroll your cursor up here to DEG and you can click on it and it'll flip it over to radians for you right there. Okay. So 
you need to be in all of these because we're dealing with cosines or sines and trigs and all that fun stuff. You need to be in weights. So what figure is that? What geometric figure is this picture, is this graph? Circle? What can you tell me about this circle? It's got a radius of three. Where's the center? So where do you think the radius part comes from in the equation? That number right there. That gets you the radius. The origin, or the center, I almost said the origin, the center comes from whatever comes after those two. So if I wanted to move that circle around, which we will do later on next week, if I want to move that circle around, I can add I can add three. So that's going to move my circle three spots to the right, and I can subtract six. So it should move my center to the point three comma negative six, which would be down here in quadrant number two, and there it is. I can move that center around. I can change that radius. Now it's got a radius of nine. Do all that those changes with me. <clears throat> this now we have differing um, numbers in front of our coefficients on our trig terms. So then it becomes an ellipse, but the ellipse has a center at the point one comma negative two. That part stays the same for this stuff afterwards. Okay. And then, of course, we have spiral of Archimedes is a good one too. Okay. Good, good times. Okay. So that's a little bit of playing around with the calculator. Um, you got to know a couple of things. I mean, you got to know what variable you're dealing with. And if you're working on the calculator, you got to have it in the variable T. Okay. You know, your variable like in the spiral of Archimedes, go back one, in the spiral of Archimedes, okay, so we got to have it wherever there's a thing, you got to put a T, because that's just the variable, yes, on paper, but the calculator is recognizing a variable of T. So that's one, one key, got to know it. The second key, got to know it, is if you're dealing with functions and you're in radians, your calculator needs to graph the radian. Now, we could have gone back in with this circle it's when we got this little this little part right there, when we got that little sliver, we could have made our T step 0 to 360 and then it would have gone all the way around because then we would have been in degrees. We would have gone all the 
2 p pi is 360 degrees, so we would have gotten that. If we would have put it at 0 to 180, we would have only gotten that. Or if we were in um, radians, if we would have went zero to pi, we would have only gotten that top half of the unit circle, or top half. Okay. Questions on that stuff? Fantastic. So what we're going to move on to now is we're going to move on to motion in a plane. Okay? So there will be two different kinds of motion that we have. So first off, we have that if an object is thrown or launched vertically, so an object goes up and it comes straight back down, okay? provided, oops, provided I don't hit the ceiling, provided I launch it straight up, it's going to go, it's going to go up, 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 and up, What's taking effect of it as soon as it leaves the launcher's hands? Gravity's going to take effect of it, slowing it down, reaches a certain point, and as high as I can reach, and reaches a certain point, stops, and then what? Comes straight back up. Now, we are assuming here no wind. And we're assuming that we're throwing this in a vacuum, that we only have gravity as our only effect. So it's going to go up, and it's going to come back down. Decelerate on the way up due to gravity. Stop for just a brief half of a heartbeat. Come back up. Straight back up. Okay. So that path can be modeled, or that the height of that object can be modeled using this which you've probably seen if you've taken a physics or a, an earth science or some kind of a class like that. So this negative 16 t squared, t, by the way, is time in seconds in this one. Okay? So t is in seconds. Negative 16 t squared, that's going to be the gravity part. That's what's going to slow it down. Okay. V sub zero here, this part, this is going to be from the initial velocity. How, how much force I put on this, this object when I throw it up is going to depend on how high it goes. Okay? Here I put very little on, it's going barely above my hands. Here I'm hitting the ceiling. Okay? I put more speed, it left the launcher, in this case the launcher is my hand, it leaves the launcher with more speed the higher it goes. Less speed, lower it. Okay? Okay? So that takes into that or takes that into account. And then this is my initial fight. That gets taken into account because if I stood up on this table and I threw it, it would go higher with the same amount of force than if I was laying on the floor and throwing it up. Okay? So you've got those three factors that go into the vertical motion of an object. Okay. So the motion of a ball. I believe this is in your packet now. It might be on page three now. Okay. From the top of a 30-foot building, a ball is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 50 feet per second. What does the ball do? Okay. So 
in function mode. So in function mode, we can write a function to go along with that. So my function, we'll call it, it could be anything, we're going to call it S of T in this case, is going to equal negative 16 T squared plus, what's my initial velocity? 50 feet per second, so that's plus 50 T. What's my initial height? 30 plus 30. Now, if I were to graph that function on a graphing tool, add graphs, we said that that function was negative 16. I got to go with x here because my function is based off of x, not t. Okay? Negative 16x squared plus 50x. Oops. Squared, not x plus 30. And when I graph that, it looks like that. Now let me adjust my window here. Menu, window, window settings, my x min. I don't need to go, no, x is my time. I don't need to go negative, but I do like to see my negative, my x, my y axis. x max. Probably can go with six there. We'll go by ones. Y min. Do I need negativeness? Why not? So the floor would be at zero, or the ground in this case, we're throwing it outside. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to keep it there though, just because again, I like to see the, the axes. How high do you think this ball is going to go? Shot me up. 50 feet. Okay. Now remember, we're launching it at 30 already. So 50. Okay. Goes higher, a little higher than 50, right? Okay. So let's adjust that then a little bit. Actually, have the brakes. I'll show you a different way that we can adjust it. I can just click there and I can go 100. Okay. What does this show? Shows the height of the ball, right? Is this the actual ball's path? No. That's what's kind of deceiving about this, is that this, this graph is just straight up height. Okay? It's not actual path of the ball. Now, let me show you something kind of cool. So this graph just shows height. Now, Using parametric equations, we can show the actual path of that ball. The actual, I don't want to call it flight path, but okay, we can show the actual flight of the ball. And it, this is where technology isn't as good. Back in the old days, back when we had TI-82s, okay, they were the old, like, they were big, thick, graphing calculator. And it was cool because you could slow down the, the calculation speed of the calculator. And so you could actually see the ball going up, slowing down, stopping, and then coming back down. Now, the processor on these calculators is so much better that it just instantly works. You can't slow it down to actually show the path of the, of the ball. Okay? But we're going to do that using a parametric. Okay? So here's how it goes. Now, we had the height of the ball is that equation that we came up with, right? Okay. In terms of x and y on a graph, 
which one would be the vertical variable? Y is the vertical variable. So that is going to be that negative 16t squared plus 50t plus 30. Okay. Now, here's the cool part. For right now, because we are launching it vertically, it has no horizontal movement whatsoever. It's just going up and down within a cylinder the size of itself. Okay? Straight up, straight down, all within that cylinder. Okay? You can put whatever you want for X. Pick a number. I don't care. Okay? Pick any number. I'm going to pick, because I'm going to put it on the exact same graph, I'm going to pick 5. Because I want you to see it on the exact same graph as the other. Okay? So now I'm going to go back to my calculator. And now I'm going to add another graph. So I'm going to go tab. I'm sure, it's going to give me all these kinds of funkiness. I'm going to go tab. It's going to open up a second graph. That one I want to be parametric. So now I'm going to go 5 for my x because that's going to put it right here. It's going to go up and down right there. Then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go negative 16. I have to switch to t's now because that's my function is in t's. Negative 16 t squared plus 50 t plus 30. My t-step, I don't care about right now. As long as it's more than, so this was, so this ball was in the air for one, two, three, more than three seconds, but not quite four seconds. So as long as my t-step is more than 3.75, looks like to be, I'm okay with it. And then when I hit enter, there now, is the actual path of the ball. It goes straight up. It started right about here. And this is, again, where technology is too fast for us. It started here, and it went up, and then it came back down. Okay. And it goes down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for 6.28 seconds, but we can shorten that up and we could get it to the stop point if we, were, if we, should, if we knew the exact time. Okay. Okay. So that's the actual path that, that that one takes. All right, next one. Now, the downfall is, is you're not always gonna throw an object straight up and then have it come straight back down. Most of the time, you're going to throw an object at an angle, okay? Baseball players throw at an angle all the time, right? Very rarely do you throw the ball straight up, okay? All right? Shot putters throw it at an angle. Hopefully javelin people, you know, we're going all, all track and field javelin people. Soccer ball gets usually kicked at an angle. Okay, all, all plenty of good stuff. Basketball players, when you're shooting, you're not shooting it straight up, okay? You're shooting it at an angle, okay? Oh, that's right, it can roll, okay? So from the top of a building now, a ball is thrown at an angle of 65 degrees with an initial velocity of, of 50 feet. We will assume gravity is the only force acting on the ball. How does this <clears throat> affect our parametric equation? Well, now, so now we're starting here, but instead we're throwing it out this way. So that's going to be the actual path of our ball. Whereas before, it just went straight up, 
and came straight back down. Okay. Now we're throwing it out there for us. Okay. So we need an initial velocity vector at an angle. So if we are throwing it in a vacuum and gravity is the only thing that's, that's going on here, I went purple in that one, okay? We start out by throwing it at a vector, <coughs> okay? And that vector, we'll call it vector V, is going to have an initial speed, correct? Well, what part of a vector is speed? It's an M word, what? Magnitude, yep. It's the magnitude of V. So we're going to need the magnitude of V, right? And then cosine of the angle, right? And then magnitude of V and the sine of the angle. We kept on doing a bunch of vectors like that. Okay. So that's going to be our initial vector, our initial velocity vector. Okay. So what happens then is we get this. Now this I believe is on your on your sheet. You want to if you have a highlighter, you want to highlight this. Okay? If you don't have a highlighter, you want to Put a big old box around it and put some stars on it and all that fun stuff. This slide is the important slide. Okay. So now what's happening is we can launch a vector at an angle using this because now the horizontal part of our vector. So here would be from our initial velocity vector, this is the x part of vector v. When I talk about vector v, I'm talking about this one. The velocity, the initial velocity, that's the magnitude of that vector, the speed. And the cosine of the launch angle is that one. So now we're launch, our launch angle is theta sub zero times t. That's going to give us our horizontal positioning. Okay. So the x part here is going to give us the horizontal on all positions. Here in that vertical motion one, this is now the y part, the vertical component of vector of vector v. And this will give us the, the object's vertical position. Those two together can model any and all objects launched at an angle. Okay? If your object is launched vertically, you only need the vertical position one. That's why we were able to do that one before. Okay? 
now that we're launching at an angle, we have position. So let me show you probably in, and this is actually kind of apropos because um, they were just here on, on Tuesday. Okay. Um, one of the, one of the great, like, you just have to race in, come on, that now, it should be going over there. Receivers get far enough down the field. Rodgers. It's going to get there. He turned 32 yesterday. Does he have a vintage moment in him? In the end zone, it is caught for the win. Richard Rodgers with a walk-off touchdown. A game in the Packers. He reared back and he launched the game. Disbelief at Ford Field. Got it. The Packers saved by the face mask call, given one last chance. Okay. And Aaron Rodgers. Okay. So let's go back to this problem here. From the top of a building, we got plenty of time. From the top of a 30 foot building, a ball is thrown at an angle of 65 degrees with an initial velocity of 50 degrees. I want to model this, the actual path of this ball. Okay. So, oops. Come back. There we go. Here we go. So, my X part of my parametric equation is going to be the initial velocity was 50. Right? So it's going to be 50 cosine of what was their initial launch angle? 65 degrees. Now, here on the calculators, I'm going to show you how we can get around it with it in you know, radians or degrees. And that's going to be times t. Agree? My y is going to be negative 16 t squared plus 50 sine of 65 degrees times t, then plus 30. See how I created that equation out of your highlighted equation? Okay. So let's go to the calculators now. We'll start a brand new page, because then that way it's nice and free and clear. Okay. We're going to add a graph. We want that graph to be in parametric. Menu, graph entry edit, parametric. Our X part was open parentheses, 50, cosine is underneath trig, 65. Now this next part is extremely important. My calculator is telling me that I am graphing in radians. I can override that by going down here to the pi key and clicking on the degree symbol. Now it will graph it at 65 degrees, even though my graphing is in radians. And that needs to be times Then I go down to my y, and I say I need that to be negative 16 t squared plus 50 
sine, sine is also in the trig one, of 65, and I have to put the degrees there, close, close, times t, then plus 30. Now my t step here, I'm going to drop that down, and I just want you to, because I, I want to show you something here. I'm going to drop that down to 2. Because I think that ball's only going to be in the air for two seconds. Okay. Now, when I hit enter, I don't see anything. Why don't I see anything? What do you mean? Where am I launching it from? With my initial height. 30 feet, right? Okay. This is only going up to six and two thirds feet. So I've got to change that number. Now, again, I got two ways to change that. I can go into menu and I can go into window zoom and I can go into window settings. Okay. Now, my X is that's going to be my horizontal position. When I throw this ball at 50 feet per second, is it going to go backwards? Because we're assuming no wind, right? Okay. We're assuming no wind, so it's not going to go backwards. So let's drop that down to negative 5. How far out do you think we're going to be able to throw this ball? I guess. How far do you think? Anyway, shot in the dark. 150? Okay, let's put 150 in there then. Scale? Scale doesn't matter. What's my Y's on this graph? Not going to go below ground level, okay? So, but I still like to see the ground, so let's go negative 5 there again, too. How high is this one going to go? Don't really know, right? Yes? 80 feet? Can I get that? What's wrong with that? We got uh, your max for the T is too small. It's too small. How do I know my max for the T is too small? Because because if I throw a ball, it just doesn't just magically stop in midair. Because remember, this is the actual path of the ball. So you're standing right here. Move this over a little bit. You're standing right here. And you're throwing this ball, and it just stops. So I screwed up on my T. Intentionally, I did that because I want you guys to see this. I hit tab. I hit tab. Come on now. Come back. I hit tab. Come on now. Hit tab. There it goes. I hit tab. Why is it acting all goofy today? I hit tab, and I have to go change this to something bigger until if I go, whoops, uh, gotta love it. If I go three, did I go far enough yet? Nope, still hasn't hit the ground yet. If I go, I'm gonna go over here to the computer, tab, easier here. I go four. Did it hit the ground? Yep, crossed over the ground. Okay. Later on, tomorrow and next week, we're going to figure out a couple of things based off of this graph. We're going to figure out one, 
what the actual time frame that it hit the ground at. Two, we're going to figure out how far away it hit the ground. Three, we're going to figure out maximum height of the ball or the object. So we're going to be able to figure out all that stuff later on in the video. Okay? Good times. Good, good times. We went a little farther. We got a little extra problem there on that one. So I think that's a good place to stop and um, redo. For you guys, 